who are praying by the instrumentality of a deep intercourse taking place. So the tongue is not, is not what pushes them actually. The tongue is actually a sign that something is happening on the inside. So when you meet those people, the hunger in their spirit creates a gangway of spirit traffic. The desire in their spirit creates a gangway for spirit traffic. The, the density of God in their spirit creates a gangway. Those who reign in life are creatures of altars. Are we together? I'm just trying to list a few things before I start talking. Those who reign in life are creatures of altars. I'm saying this because you can come for a conference like this and you get swallowed up in excitement. And you are not able to create an altar. When you run through scripture, no man had dominion without altars. Not one. Jacob received the blessings from his father. It was when he hit on the altar that dominion was activated. And what did they see? They saw a traffic of angels. Ascending and descending. The moment that traffic is established, if you like, sell slippers, you will dominate. If you like, sell pure water, you will dominate. If you like, just walk around and be a marketer, you will dominate. Because it's not what you are doing in the natural that prospers you, it's the spirit that backs it up. When a man carries that altar, there are a lot of things that begins to happen in his life. The second thing that makes for reigning in life are scepters. I'm listing a few things for you. In the evening, I will teach you how to assess those things. The, the kind of scepter you carry is what determines the kind of dominion you exercise. You know, as a young Christian, you'll be excited by many things. I saw people who quoted scriptures, I memorized scriptures, and I quoted. But our results were worlds apart. Somebody comes, quote one scripture, and the blind, I, blind eyes open. I come, I quote five, the eyes remain blind. Somebody comes, quotes one scripture, a cripple rises. I come, I quote ten, the person becomes more crippled. And I ask myself, what is going on here? I now realize that the scriptures the men were quoting were not memorized. Those scriptures were access points that they had in the spirit. So they dug into those scriptures until those scriptures became doorways. It was when they entered those scriptures that they came up with the scepter. So somebody is quoting a scripture he heard. Another person is quoting a place that he traveled to. They are two different realities. For two people quoting scripture, one is quoting what he memorized. Another person is quoting a location. You can stay in Lagos and talk about Port Harcourt because you read it. A man who has come to Port Harcourt before, he will not just talk about it, he has an experience. The guy who has an experience has authority. That authority is called a scepter. There are many people today who don't have scepters in the spirit. They are quoting what they hear people say. That's why many people are motivated to listen to messages. They are not listening to messages because they want to travel. They are listening to messages because they want to in improve their vocabulary. Your vocabulary will improve when you speak. People will clap, but spirits will laugh. Because it's one thing to quote what you heard. It's another thing to labor in the spirit to join in there. So scriptures, I realized, were doors in the spirit. That's why I said, holy men of God. He said they speak as they were carried by the Spirit of God. So everything they wrote down were testimonies of their journeys in the Spirit. So when a man says power, or he says the power of the Holy Spirit, he's not just making a phrase or a statement. He's talking about a dimension that he has entered into. And when he enters that dimension, he comes back with dispensations. He comes back with realities. Because in the Spirit, a place is not just a location. A place is an access point to reality. I can come into a place and I enter a dispensation. I can come into a place and when I come back to you, I will come back with the Elijah dimension. Because that place is a host of a dimension. So for me, it's not a location. I step into a reality. I can enter a place in the spirit and when I come, I will come with wisdom. 
I can enter a place in the spirit. When I come, I come with favor. I can enter a place in the spirit. When I come, I come with power. The reason is because those places are actually access points to reality. What I come back with is a scepter. That is why you and I can quote John 3.16. But for you, when you enter John 3.16, John 3.16 was confidence and power. For me, when I entered John 3.16, it was favor and assurance. So both of us will be walking with John 3.16. You will be casting out devils and will be prospering. Because when we enter John 3.16, John 3.16 meant different things for us. So when I come for a meeting, both of us can quote John 3.16. The people will still be blessed. Because why I'm quoting John 3.16, the power of God will be moving. When you are quoting John 3.16, people will be prospering. Because the scripture is not to educate you. The scripture is to open you to a realm. When people don't understand this, they will be doing business with the scripture or they will be shadow. When you know this, you will discover that scriptures are access points. When you are able to enter, a scepter is given to you. What gives you dominion in life is not the scriptures you quote, it's the scepter you carry. But for you to access the scepter, you must enter a scripture. This is why Paul said, until I come. He said, give attendance to reading. 1 Timothy 4.13 To exhortation and to doctrine. He didn't say read it and listen to it. In verse 16 he said, Give thyself wholly to this thing. That your profiting may be made manifest. You've got to submit to this thing until you enter into the reality. Why am I saying this? Our generation lacks scepter because we don't stay. It takes pain and time for the doors to open. He said, knock, the door will be open. It takes time. We are running over everything. You attend one conference, you hear Apostle A, you hear Apostle B, you hear Apostle, 3, Apostle C, and you gather what they said, and you come to a place, you become Apostle D. But you became Apostle D by copying what other people said. Meanwhile, Apostle A said something because he entered into it. We are in a rush to manifest, but we have not waited for the doors to open. When you know this truth, you can sit with one scripture for three months because you are wait, you want to enter it. What gives men power to reign in life? It's not sensation. When you are done shouting and laughing with excitement, you will come back to reality where the demons dwell. And when you come and say, open the gates, they will say, who is talking? We are not moved. We have seen men of many generations. We saw your great-grandfather. We saw your grandfather. We saw your father. We have seen you. We know that in your family, this is the temperament that is dominant. So that you are doing like this. We know that's how your father too responds. You want to reign, there must be scepter. Number three. You want to reign in life. There must be ascension. Men who reign don't reign from the same plane. The Bible says without every contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. That means a higher pedestal in the spirit gives you an advantage. Too many people are on ground trying to fight on ground. You'll be disadvantaged. This is why those who reign in life understand the technology of quickening. Because if you are not quickened, you can't ascend. And if you cannot ascend, you cannot bring dominion to a territory. That's why every time there is dominion, there is the word mountain. Upon Mount Zion, there is deliverance. Only those who go high are able to establish dominion. And for you to go high, you must master the technology of quickening. But the problem most times is that our generation is beset. They said to put aside every sin and every weight that does easily beset you. Because there are too many weights that prevent your ascension. Today you find somebody praying for four hours, but gossip and malice is still a natural part of him. And so even though he has tarried from morning to night, he's heavy, he can't fly. Today you find somebody tarried in tongues for seven hours, but even after that prayer, there is still malice in his heart. There is jealousy in his heart. There is competition. When you probe carefully, the reason he's praying for seven hours is because the brother he started with yesterday, can you imagine? They have invited him for three meetings this month and me that is here have not been invited. And people are looking at me like the ministry is not working. So he went to waste his time on the altar trying to compete with somebody that God is lifting. And while he's yet on that altar, 
the weight he carries in his heart keep drawing him down. Every time a man wants to fly, he must be light. If you are not light, you can never ascend. I'm saying this so you will know the things that matter. When you see men exercising dominion, there are things they know. The reason we are quick to forgive is not because forgiveness is easy, but we have a journey. And if we don't, for, if we don't forgive, those things will hinder our journey. I have a target for the next two years. That's why I can't afford to put you in my heart. No matter how you offend me. Some people are too unreasonable to be forgiven. But I will be reasonable to forgive them because I have a journey. If I put that weight in my heart, it will stop me from going to where I'm going to. I'm telling you why we do a lot of things and at the end of the day we have little results. And we cannot reign. When the demons come, they know you are praying in tongues but they bring people who offend you more and more. And then you come from the place of prayer. You have this person on the right side of your heart. You have this other one on the left side of your heart. You have the other one in the middle part of your heart. So your prayer enterprise for one year is useless. The devil can't stop you from praying. Because there is a pastor insisting that you must pray. And because he can't discourage that pastor from stopping you praying. It will cause you to carry a lot of people in your heart that the pastor is not aware. And you are praying but you never ascend. And then you end up congratulating yourself for the number of hours you are able to pray. The question is, what was the height you ascended the last time you prayed? Because when the fathers of old prayed, they journeyed in the spirit. He said, I was in the spirit on the last day, and I heard the sound as of a trumpet, and he said unto me, come up hither. Because only those who are up can rule the earth. Realm. You can ascend in a second. I don't need keyboard to ascend. I know that the technology of ascension is to keep my heart pure. Sometimes it's bitterness that pulls you down. And so when you go to pray, it will insist that you are purged. Because you can't go far. It will stop you. The creatures you want to interact with, some of them are called the burning ones. You can't come into their ecosystem. They are beings of fire. How can you come there with the garbage of iniquity? So before you journey, you have to be purged. You have to be light to travel. Because when you start ascending, you will meet different atmospheres. You know, when a plane is flying, the atmosphere of earth is oxygen. When you go to a height, there is a place where you have helium. Helium is lighter than oxygen. You need another technology to fly there. That's why you can come to church with, with manis. When you want to come into the realm of the spirit, man is can't stand. So no matter how you try, you can't pierce. And if you can't go high, you will give command on earth. Nothing happens. And you are wondering, why can't I reign? Because you can't ascend. Ascension is one of the requirements in order to man your apostolic gates so that you can bring deliverance unto Jacob. But there are too many people walking on earth because they are hindered from flying in the spirit. Let me stop here. I want to teach some. Let me teach some things. If I continue this one, it will affect somebody too much. He's now seeing that ah, I thought, I thought something was happening. I received terrible impartation from a list ministers, and when I come back thinking that my my word have changed, the Holy Ghost now tell me that uh, you are a stingy man, and. Since you are stingy with natural things, if I give you spiritual things, you'll still be stingy. And so there's no way you can grow. I received an impartation from a global apostle. I couldn't stand for days. And the Lord is telling me, there's nothing wrong with the impartation. He said, but it will, mani it will manifest because your heart is not large. The reason is because if you pray for somebody else and he starts doing better than you, you will die. You can't tolerate it. So because of that, you can't communicate the anointing. So I will stop you there. There are spiritual intelligence that the church needs to be taught again. These ones are basic things because 
In the evening, I will say, I will start talking without regard. That's why I'm creating the foundation. I'm just creating foundation. Creating foundation. Okay, check your heart for one minute. And find out the garbage that is there. Find out. Just check. And you, you will see why all the impartations have not been working. You see why all the hours you tarried have not been working. There's too much garbage. Some of us can't control our mouth. We like pulling people down. And until you have said something bad about somebody, you are not excited. So when they are talking, you just say, hmm. Hmm. Well, I don't want to say anything so that it doesn't look like. The moment they say, I don't want to say anything, they have started talking. That's when they want to say. And until you whitewash that person, paint that person and bring the worst thing about that person, you are not excited. And then you come back later, you say, we want to, we want to take over for court. With which mouth? Foundation. When you are able to put all of these things in place, then spirits begin to dwell with you. The secret of dominion is actually the dwelling of spirits. Man was not created to exercise dominion on his own. The capacity to exercise dominion is actually the communication of spirits and their realities. But for any spirit to dwell with you, there must be a reconstruction carried out around your life. This is why it's not the impartations that are the problem. I can come into this hall now and lift a song and my spirit will come alive. I'll make declarations, this place will be on fire. But for how long can you keep it? Because the spirit will come. At the end of the day, they can't stay. And because they can't stay, you will exercise it for three days and you discover it's gone. The first time, Randy Clark imparted me. I came back home. I discovered even the things I said casually were happening. Now, Randy Clark is a global apostle. A lady came to me. She has had hepatitis. I said, it's gone. She came back the next day. Ah, she did the test. It's gone. I said, wait, what? What happened? It's gone. I was just talking. Things were happening. I said, okay. The time for global ministry have come. <laughs> the hour. Now is the hour. I have been waiting for this for long. And I went and organized some suits. To begin my global ministry. After two weeks. I now said. On Saturday mornings I will be praying for the sick. You know when you do for one, two, three, four, five. And it's consistent. It means it has rested. And I said Saturdays are for prayers. If you are sick come on Saturday. After two weeks. I came like a bishop. I made declarations. Make declarations. Nothing happened. What is going on here? The anointing that came have lifted. Because there's no consecration for it to rest on. That's why when I come, they say impartation service, I calm the people down first. You need to count the cost. Don't just get excited. Because for some of you, you will need to take off things from your life to be able to go with what is here. If not, you will end up having a record of the people that have laid hands on you. But there will be nothing to show for it. You can even copy the utterances. But there will be nothing to show for it. But if you are able to deal with these things, you will not only receive it, but you will keep it. Then you become a savior to your generation. I work with young people, so I'm not interested in exciting them. Because if you're only excited, after 10 years, you discover you wasted your life. When you put these things in place, and there are about 12 of them, when you put these things in place, and spirits are able to tabernacle with you, then a few things are deposited on your life. Those things deposited on your life are the channels for dominion. And those are the things I want to talk about. The channels through which you exercise dominion and you reign in life. 
The first thing the spirits that come to tabernacle with you will give you is what we call wisdom and understanding. Nobody reigns without wisdom. Nobody reigns without understanding. But wisdom is not gotten just by reading a book. In the olden days, when they called a man wise, or when they called somebody a wise man, is his ability to look into the spirit realm. So Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And he said, to gather all the wise men of Babylon. This is not come to read a book and give a speech. If it's about speech giving, politicians would have been the wisest men. But we discover that when they go into office, they are daft. They don't even have an idea of the problem of society. They just came to loot money and go. Meanwhile, the best speeches in the world were given by politicians. They chronicle them like this and they deliver them. But wisdom is not about what you say. It's about the spirit that talks to you and the impact of those utterances. That's why I say wisdom is justified by her children. And so when the Bukhaknis are called the wise men of old, he didn't call them to deliver a speech. He told them, I had a dream. This is the dream I had. If you are able to tell me the dream, I will know you can interpret it. Now, this is not a speech. And you didn't sleep with him. And even if you slept on the same bed with him, you didn't go to where he went to his dream. So for you to be a wise man, you must need a spirit to whisper to your ears. So wisdom, therefore, is the spirits that talk to you. The impact that it produces. And so nobody could. Daniel told him, give us time. There is a God in heaven that reveals secrets. And when Daniel went, the Bible said the dream was given to Daniel. The interpretation and the dream was given to Daniel by a night vision. And when he showed up the next morning, he showed us what it meant to be a wise man. And he said, oh king, this is a dream you had. Now when somebody comes to you and tells you this is the dream you had, and he tells you you will need them. That's how you exercise dominion. You exercise dominion by accessing what others cannot access. And the only way to access it is to make contact with a spirit that hosts those dimensions. And so when he gave him the dream, he interpreted the dream. Instantly, the king knelt down for him to bless him. So when a man is blessing a king, he's reigning. But what confers that level of authority is wisdom. 90 to 99% of Christians today have no access to the realm of wisdom because they have no access to the realm of the voice of God. When you ask them around major decisions of their life, including the spiritual ones that are in ministry, every step they took is out of assumptions, presumptions, and presuppositions. Somebody said it, they feel this is better than this, so you find believers trying to weigh alternatives. Somebody wants to get married, a banker comes and a carpenter comes, and they say, well, the banker's salary is more. But because he can't hear the voice of his spirit, he can't see tomorrow. And he ends up marrying a banker whose lifespan is five years. And the carpenter he rejects today, five years later, is supposed to become a millionaire. And he has a lifespan of 70 years. How would you tell the... And I'm not saying bankers would die. Okay. <laughs> so wisdom is not how well you can articulate facts. The reason is because facts exist for the present. But wisdom impacts both the present and the future. And that is why men who exercise dominion are men of wisdom. Wisdom is the key that produces authority for dominion. And without wisdom you can't reign. But you see, the only way you can reign is when a spirit dwells with you. Because that spirit is what furnishes you with the wisdom. That's why I told you, these are tokens of the first things I listed. When a man begins to live on the altar and spiritual traffic begins to take place, he interacts with different kinds of spirits. And those spirits are the ones that furnishes him with wisdom. When a man purges himself and spirits begin to abide with him, those spirits don't keep quiet. When they come, sometimes somebody is passing, they'll tell you, this man is the bad man. Don't go near him. Meanwhile, the man will come to you with a smile and tell you, I love you, my brother. You have heard a whisper. So even if that man gives you a car, you will run from him. Have you not seen people that gave you money 
But when they are coming to you, you say, tell them I'm not around. The reason is because even though his gesture is, is good, you are hearing a whisper that you can't refuse. That whisper makes you a wise man. As you function on the strength of that kind of wisdom, you will naturally reign from the place of rest. Because every step of your life, there's an instruction that comes from the spirit that you have labored to preserve by altars. Every step of your life, there is a wisdom that you have trapped from the spirit that through purging yourself, you have been able to trap. Because when he told you, somebody offended you, he said, you go and apologize. You wept because he affected your pride. What the spirit is trying to do is to create a foundation for himself to dwell. Because your pride won't let him. When you went to apologize, he pained you. But what you didn't know is that you have trapped a spirit. Because you apologized and you were broken. That, that brokenness became a portal for that spirit to enter your life. You will not know the advantage the day you apologize. The day you apologize, you look like a fool. But three months later, the spirit that you created a portal for will begin to tell you, this business you want to do will fail in three months. Do this one. Everybody is running from that business. You now do it. After six months, the one that was blossoming fails. And then they now look at you and say, how did you know? I apologize when I should be apologized to. And because I apologize when I should be apologized to, a spirit now tabernacles with me. I know these things by experience. When I got married, a new order of operation began to happen in my life. The reason is because before I got married, I existed like a king. From primary school, I came first. I know some of my mates. And you know anybody who comes first in primary school consistently becomes the leader of the gang. Is this strange to some of you? Why those who come first, they know what I'm saying. When you come first, you become the leader. Everybody follows you. So I got used to people following me from the beginning. Hey, how are you doing this? Get up! Get up! I, I'm a commander. Until when I got married, I couldn't say get out again. That was the first time my things were attacked. Things began to be attacked. Ah! I want to give command. They said, no, this is not one of those in your pack. This one is wife. I started learning to say sorry. And sometimes when I want to say sorry, sorry will be heavy. And I'm not saying 10 years marriage, this is 10 months. <laughs> you don't know how fleshly we can be. When I want to say sorry, I'll not say, where that thing happened, sorry. <laughs> God will say, no, it's not like that. Ah! For the first two months, it became a prison. What do you mean? And my wife doesn't argue. She doesn't fight. She doesn't be quiet. Her quietness now began to tamper with my conscience. My conscience that I have hid somewhere that nothing can touch. Now, I have somebody in my space that now touches that conscience. God started, God really bullied me the first two months. But why he bullied me, he created the space. I now discovered three months later, I'll go for a meeting as I stand. I'll say, there's somebody on this second row. You have something on your throat. And the person will come out. Ah, is it true? While I'm talking, turning like this, I'll see something like a flash, a screen, in microsecond. I will do it in the evening. It's not there. Uh... <laughs> as I'm as I'm just talking, a, a, a screen will pass. Pop. I'll see somebody with a, a broken joint. He can't lift his hand. And the moment I say, "There's somebody here. You can't lift your hand. Lift it now. It's gone." Ah. I didn't know that those two months that I was being reconstructed. Spirits were coming to dwell. Spirits were coming to dwell. It's when I went out, I saw the manifestation. Now, because those spirits began to dwell, wisdom came. In 10 months of marrying, the things that happened in my life is more than the last 10 years of my life. Because when these spirits of wisdom come, it was those spirits that told me, go to Abuja. Ah, go to Abuja. And do what? How do I start in Abuja? As I came, every step by the way, it was leading me. When we started in Abuja, every bee they brought was in millions. It's not one, it's not two, it's not three, it's not four, it's not five million. You see bee of 12 million, 32 million. Ah, what is happening here? <laughs> I wanted to go back and go back to Sokoto because I, in the north is easy for me. But that spirit, I will lie down and say, talk please. You will talk. Somebody will just come for Bible study and say, Take eight thousand dollars because you said something that the spirit told you. The spirit will say, "Go here." I will stand up and go. 
As you, you go there. Somebody who came will just say, I, I couldn't sleep. God said, I should come for this meeting. And when he come, he will give you an envelope. You think it's the usual 50,000 they used to give you. When you open it, you now see that it's another currency. That time, you collect it from your protocol officer and put it in your... <laughs> <laughs> the protocol... <laughs> Protocol and carry it with you will put that one here because you don't open that to the public. When you go to the hotel, you say lock the door. You want to kneel down and pray. When they lock the door, they will turn. <laughs> what is going on here? Something has changed. Dominion has come because the whispers of the spirit have begun. And when those whispers begin, he will take you from nowhere to somewhere. He will lift you from a nobody to a somebody. Because your life becomes a map that you are tracing. Every step you take is a map into greatness. Because wisdom is not the gathering of facts in your mind. It's the leadership of the spirit that you can now hear his voice. In Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 12, he says wisdom is a defense. It's not about information. He it said it's a defense. And he said the excellency of knowledge, it giveth life. The life dimension that produces dominion is a product of the whispers. There are many people that are stranded in life because they can't hear the spirits. The reason is because when the spirits came around them and was troubling them every night to erect an altar, they wanted to sleep. They didn't know that those altars will become gangways through which those spirits will invade their ecosystem. Those men didn't know. When the spirit came and said, no, they were quarreling. and said, keep quiet. Don't talk. You said, no, I must defend myself. I never keep quiet. This man, I have never you heard. Because when that spirit said, keep quiet, what he's trying to do is to dig into your soul. There is a place in your belly that that spirit wants to tabernacle so that he can lord through your life into your ecosystem. But when he gave you those commandments, you violated it. You thought it was about an apology in a dispute. It had nothing to do with the dispute. You were being drawn into the part of the spirit where you can be taught ancient wisdom that ordinary men don't access. Many times it's not what you hear in a conference. It's the journeys that you travel with the spirits of God that determines the depth of wisdom that you can communicate. There are many of you here that God has told you before. From 12 to 3 fast and pray. And you thought it was a joke. It's not about the religiosity. Your heart is, is, is full of debris. He wants to excavate those debris so that he can enter. Because he's a king. He cannot coexist with those garbage in your soul. So every time these spirits invade your life with instruction, they are creating a, a pathway. It's like creating a road for, for a king to drive. Because he knows that your, your pride will interrupt him. Your fear will interrupt him. Your anger will interrupt him. Your weakness and laxity will interrupt him. So many times he brings technology. It can be giving. It can be prayer. It can be giving you diverse instruction. When he comes there, the sign that he has come is not the feeling. One of the signs that he has come is that you op he opens you up to wisdom. That wisdom makes you invincible. That's why young believers function by feeling. When, when they do like this, ah, ah, they are feeling fire. Welcome. When you feel it for one year, you will stop. You will be able to come. The first time I started feeling fire in my right hand, ah, everybody I met, I say, ah, I'm feeling fire. I wanted them to know that I'm a spiritual man. I'm feeling fire. This fire, I don't know. This fire. After a while, the fire became one of the many signs. So the goal was not the fire. It was what the fire meant. So if I'm in a meeting and I feel it, I know I can drop the microphone and say, Lord, touch now. That's why sometimes I come for a meeting and say, stop playing the keyboard. Stop. 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 Somebody told me, ha, ah, we need this sound. I found something. When that fire is here, even if it's in ice block, you will be in cold. I can say, shut, keep quiet. Everybody sit down. I'll say, Father, the people you want to bless, touch them now. The fire from my hand will engulf the auditorium. I don't need to shout. I don't need sound. But it took something for that fire to come. So when you see a spiritual man, the reason sometimes you are, they are gathered is because they are trying to interpret signals. They are trying to interpret signs. Sometimes your ears start moving. Ah, your ears moving. What? It means a lot of things to you in the spirit. Somebody may not understand it. But 
it is the instrumentality of the spirit of wisdom. When these things begin to happen, you know what they mean. So you become so invincible that men will look at you like a wonder to their generation. One of the tokens that a man has been brought into the realm of dominion is that wisdom is given to him. And wisdom is the voice and the leadership of spirits. Many of you who will receive hunger from this conference, it's not about the 120 day fast you embark on. It's about the product of those fastings. Because as you start that fasting, instructions will begin to come. When you obey that instruction to a point, then you will begin to hear these tokens. And the first token you will see most of the time is wisdom. When wisdom comes, it directs you into greatness. That direction of wisdom is what confers upon you the power for dominion. In Proverbs chapter 8 verse 15, wisdom was speaking. He said, by me, kings reign. He said, by me, princes decree justice. He said, the rulers of the earth, they rule by my excellency. That's wisdom talking. So when you find a man of dominion, he's a man vested with too much wisdom. Did you not read about Solomon? David fought 44 battles. Solomon didn't fight one. Because what arrows and bows can do, wisdom can do two times. Because of the wisdom of Solomon, even his enemies were at peace with him. Men traveled from far and wide to come hear the wisdom of Solomon. Have you not noticed that the greatest men in the generation are not necessarily the firemen? Oh, you didn't notice. <laughs> My people told me, I said, it's not every service that is fire service. We need fire to set the generation aright, but we need wisdom to confer greatness and authority. That's why when you go to our fathers, the ones that are leading this generation, go to their meetings, you will discover that the first thing you will identify is wisdom. How they are able to manage their staff. 2,000 staff. Everybody is running as if they want to kill themselves. As if the man is looking at them. It's wisdom at work. The edifice they built, how they came about it, is wisdom at work. You enter the auditorium, 50,000, they are having three services. What do you mean? What are you telling these people? Why are they coming? There's a technology. The spirits have told them things that they have done. And so long as they keep doing those things, the men cannot but come. I studied the life of Bishop Wedekwa and I was in wonder. A man left the city. The church in the city was 10,000. He locked the door and he went into a forest. And in the forest, he built 50,000 and they have four services. People are come. The, the, the last time I went to Canaan land, I said, what? I didn't go on a Sunday. There was still hold up. And I began to wonder the kind of pains people go through in order to attend services there. Meanwhile, they do early morning prayer by 6 a.m. And thousands of people defy all kinds of pain to be there. How many of you have woken up 6 a.m. in the last two months? These people wake up sometimes 4.30 just to come there. What is happening is wisdom at work. There are many people raising the dead today that nobody knows they exist. Because they have power but they don't have wisdom. When a man wants to reign, he must pay the price to come to the realm where the spirits talk to him. If the Holy Ghost doesn't minister to you, angels don't minister to you, you are in trouble. In this life, you will fail. That's why I took time to explain three out of the 12 things that trap spirits in a man's life. Altars. When we pray, it's not a religion. We are insisting that something must happen to our ecosystem. There are too many people that their realm is silent. There are no voices there. And that's why they don't know what to do. But when a man begins to function by wisdom, he says he begins to reign. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15, he said, The labor of the foolish wearieth every one of them, for they know not how to enter the city. That you are laboring does not mean you succeed, except the ingredient of wisdom is added to it, because reigning in life is a product of wisdom. It's not just fire. That's why we fight to keep the spirits in our ecosystem. Because they are the custodians of wisdom. They know the secrets of God and they know the secrets of the realm. When they guide you, you can't miss it. Is it true wisdom is an house builder? By understanding, it is established. And it said, by knowledge, all the chambers are filled with 
precious things. There are many Christians today who lack wisdom. And they lack wisdom because they have not paid the price to keep God. Have you not seen people that evaporated their atmosphere with movies? Have you not seen people that evaporated their atmosphere with malice? Have you not seen people that evaporated, diffused their atmosphere with sentiment, gullible sentiment? Because they don't know that their greatest treasure is that atmosphere they created that spirit can easily invade and come away. You can, you can, you can, you can shut out five years of your life just because you lost an atmosphere. Because the spirit that should give you the strategic direction that you should take at that junction, you didn't hear him. And you took the wrong turn. And I've said it again and again. If you are in the wrong direction, speed is not an advantage. This is why we cannot afford to miss the voice of God. The voice of God is spiritual wisdom. Any believer who doesn't pay the price to trap him can never reign in life. Forget all this golly booting and born again and the righteousness of God. You are joking. Those are foundations of faith. New creation reality. People are quoting it, they are dying. People are quoting it, they are going nowhere. Because the men who taught you hear their stories. They will tell you, God told me. God told me. God told me. They didn't become great because they are new creation. They became great because in addition to being new creations, they heard the voice of God. They heard the voice of angels. They heard the voice of the Holy Spirit. You are here quoting your fathers, you're quoting the fathers of faith, and you don't have the kind of rigid experiences they have in the spirit. And you think you can succeed them. We are joking. This is why we pay the price to trap the voice of God. And you can't trap the voice of God unless God is in your ecosystem. When this wisdom comes, you'll be shocked the way he will guide you. There's a wisdom of honor. You are praying to God to promote you. And God is telling you to serve somebody. And then you are trying to rationalize. I'm saying I don't have time. I'm 35 years old. My mates have gone ahead of me. I need you to do something urgent. He said, go and serve this man. Go and honor this man. Will I still go and waste the next four years of my life? <laughs> you don't know the technology. When the hand of God comes upon you, you will outrun the chariots of Ahab. But what you need to do to provoke it is what he's telling you. Because what that man already has, God won't bring it from heaven. He will transfer it from that man to you. So he's telling you, go there and honor him. If you honor him, whether he likes it or not, you'll receive it. Because there's a way to take something from a man, whether he wants to give it or not. Hope you know Elijah never wanted to give Elijah the mantle. But Elijah had honored Elijah too much that when Elijah was going, the whirlwind blew the mantle down. You can't take it anywhere. A man honoring you is on ground. You can't but bless him. This why men reign. And when alien spirits enter our world, they begin to fight divine wisdom. And so we have a godless generation, an irreverent generation. People gather, they think they have revelation of scripture. And they speak against authorities. They speak against powers. And they don't know that they are short-circuiting their possibilities. Because wisdom is lacking. There's a wisdom of giving in this kingdom. You have nothing. You are saving money for your house rent. Your house rent is 400,000. You have saved 50,000 in six months. And you come somewhere and say, give it to this person. And then you say, what? What I saved in six months. I have four months to deadline. My, 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 my landlord will soon come. And you say, as you, what do you want me to be stranded? It's a wisdom at work. It's a give a portion to seven. Give a portion to eight. You know not the evil that will come upon the earth. In the morning, sow thy seed. In the evening, withhold not thy hand. It's a technology superior to your realm. I'm not talking about zealous giving. I'm talking about men who know the voice of God. And you enter a place and it tells you, drop it. And you drop it. And you go out. And in one week, you will get what you didn't get in six months. And then you are wondering, how did this happen? Because when you obey the voice of God, He reprograms nature to your advantage. That's why I said, you know not the evil that will come upon the earth. That means, 
even the earth no longer has the power to stop you. If the earth decides to fail, you will still succeed. That's why the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. It said, therefore, get wisdom. And in all that get it, get understanding. And I came to tell you, wisdom is not gathering facts. It's access to the voice of God. And it will take spiritual labor to trap the voice of God. Praise the Lord. There's a wisdom of humility. The wisdom of humility is what makes men to rise. The lifting of men is a, is a function of humility. Not a function of power. You can be so anointed and be in one spot for 10 years. And then you are wondering what's going on. I spoke with a man. He called me, reached out to me and said, The great apostle. He said, God bless you, sir. The man is calling me the great apostle. I, I salute you, sir. I didn't know God sent him to shift me. <laughs> you are the only person thinking that the oil on your head which will shape the whole world. Which celebrate you, sir. I spoke with the man for a, short, a couple of, ta- of, of times and after a while, this man would call me and pay $100,000 for me to be put on TV that will start beaming from April. $100,000 is over 57 million naira. What if when I spoke to him and he called me great apostle, I squared my shoulder and said, yes, how, are you doing? how can I help you? <laughs> how can I help you? He will say, God bless you, sir. I end the call. That will be the last time. But you just shut the door to your television ministry. That's why you hear God. You are too dull to lead your own life. He says, it's not given to man that walketh to order his step. Your brain can do physics and chemistry, not life. The algorithm for life is more complex than physics. <laughs> but until you can hear, you will not be that wise. You will not be that wise. If you learn this foundation, some of you will leave this conference and tell yourself, until I begin to hear God for everything, my life has not started. And that is the truth. Because you can be 50 years old, you have not started living. Because you actually start living when you start hearing God. That's why your life will be full of mistakes and dislocations. You are in Lagos when you should be in Adamawa. And you don't know why you are struggling. All the favor you receive in, in Lagos still can't make you fulfill destiny. Because principally speaking, you are already dislocated. You start living the day you start hearing God. That's why you pay the price to trap spirits. Praise God. Is this simple? Number two, you know the conference is called reigning in life. If I don't say these things and I come and I begin to ascend into my element, you will admire me, you will receive impartation and go. But after two weeks, you will come back to where you are. But when I talk like this, somebody will live here and he will no longer pride himself in prayer. He will say, if I pray, I must hear God. So his prayer now has a focus. A man who is praying to hear God is superior to a man who is praying for 10 hours. Because the man who is praying for 10 hours has a benchmark. The man who is praying to hear God, if he doesn't hear God, after 70 hours he's still praying. After two weeks, he's still praying. After one month, he's still praying. And when he starts hearing God, he won't stop. Because every day he will want to hear God. So he's not praying with time. Prayer becomes his life. Because the means by which you trap it is the means by which you will keep it. Praise God. You want to reign in life, you must function by wisdom. You want to function by wisdom, you must hear God. You want to hear God, there is a technology. Altars, brokenness, all these things must be installed. 
Some of us are so full of ourselves. We are like peacocks. And we don't know why life is not going anywhere. And motivational speakers will come and say, Package. And you have been doing packaging for six years. You are packaged until the packaging has been repackaged and repackaged. And now when people see you, they know you are a bundle of package. Praise God. The second thing that confers the authority to reign in life, which are some of the tokens you receive when spirits come into your ecosystem, is favor. When spirits begin to live around you, their atmosphere rubs off on you. What we call favor are actually the fragrances of the spirits we interact with. When you deal with the Holy Ghost for a long time, or certain angels, they will rub off something on you. You know, when you hug me, a measure of my perfume will follow you. And those who know my perfume, when they see you, they will know that ah, you've been with Mike. So the things that happen to me will begin to happen to you. Hope you know that Jacob received an inheritance because of perfume. <laughs> he touched the skin. It was like Esau's. The aroma, like Esau. What is going on here? So when your atmosphere begins to affect you, some of the fragrances it produces are favor. And those favor have power to affect your world. In Exodus chapter 12 verse 36, Israel had been in Egypt for 430 years. As slaves, suddenly, favor comes upon their life. And the Bible will make a very strange statement. They say God gave favor to the Israelites. I thought God would give Israel something else. Why didn't you give them wealth? Why didn't you give them power? He said, God gave Israel favor. And on the strength of that favor, he said, Israel spoiled the Egyptians. They took the wealth of Egypt because of favor. So favor has the power to produce wealth. Wealth has the power to make you rule in life. There are many things favor can do for you that your intelligence and hard work cannot do. How can a 400 years old slave suddenly become a creature that is master? We want to give him his best treasures. Because favor reprogrammed their thinking faculties. When a man becomes... Have you seen men who are favored before? You are coming somewhere and the people are restless. They don't know what they will do for you to be satisfied. When they give you all they have, they still escort you to the junction. While you are yet going, they are standing and waiting. They wish they gave you themselves. Can I tell you why many great men have people serving them without supervision? It's favor. The favor on their life is so strong that the people serving them are killing themselves and they think they are doing honor to these people. The Bible said David desired to drink water from the well that is in the garrison of the Philistine. The moment they heard it, he didn't tell them, get me water. The Bible said they put their lives to jeopardy. Because how can you jeopardize your life because somebody is thirsty? Does that mean his thirst is superior to your life? Are you that worthless? It's not because you are worthless. Because these men were called mighty men. These were heavy men. But on the strength of the favor that was on the life of David, they were willing to die just for David to drink water. If that kind of favor is on your life today, tell me why you will struggle. Tell me why. That you, you were just thirsty. Somebody is willing to die for you to drink water. It's a dimension of favor. That's why you see somebody has 5,000 staff. You are wondering, how, how is he controlling these people? He's not controlling them. Everybody is serving him as if it's an honor to die for him. Everybody. There are some people who have not seen their staff for two years. But every day that staff comes to work, he wants to kill himself. Doing it with joy. Because the favor of the man's life is controlling him. That favor reprograms you. The same way it reprograms the Israelites. That suddenly they looked at their slave and assumed that no, they deserve all that they had. 
That's how flavor it programs men. So people on their own go out of their way to ensure that you are comfortable. You have a vision and all of a sudden everybody go out of their way to ensure that that vision work and then you are wondering what is going on? Favor is at work. You stand up, you say we need a land. That day, four people give you land. And it's not because they have too many. The land they gave you, some of them, is the land they saved money for 10 years to buy. But because you say you need a land, 10 years of savings, they can't buy it together and say, please take. When you see men rain, the volume of favor they carry is thick. Is very thick. I heard Pastor Chris said something. He said, I don't ask for things. He said, I ask it for people. Because if I just think it, it happens. And while he was preaching in the service, he said, jokingly, about a car. The moment the service was over, they packed six cars. Six waiting. So they are careful not to say anything. Because if, they just, if you just stand up and say, my watch, the next day you have 200 watches. People are just waiting to, to see if you need anything. And you are wondering, even they themselves don't know why. Because the man who is killing himself to bless you, maybe in his house he doesn't have food. And then he doesn't know what is up. That's favor. But the reason people have those kind of favor is not gimmick. A spirit have rubbed off on them. So when they see you, it is the glory of those spirits that they see. So they interact with you based on the glory of the spirits that rub themselves up on you. That's why people can give you money. They can give you time. They can give you their asset, And you are wondering what is happening. It's favor at work. Those days when we were much younger, sometimes we went for meetings. We don't even hear what the preacher preached. We just came as we see the person. We are blessed. We are so... I used to travel to Lagos just to look at Pastor Chris. I will come back from the meeting. Sometimes I don't remember anything he, he taught. And I don't care. My impartation is just to see him. My God. I'm talking 10 years ago. My whole savings. I will use it to pay for transport fare. I don't even have accommodation most of the time. We are coming to Ikeja. Kudra to be on our way. And I'm staying in my two. In a French place. I will come there, no food to eat because I use all my money for transport. I will stay for morning service and evening service. When the man of God comes out, oh Jesus, I just start weeping. Sometimes when he comes out, we will now kneel down. Lord, help us. Help us. Just to look at him. If he likes, he should come and smile. It's enough. We didn't come to hear Rema. Thank God for the message. But the impartation we receive just looking at him is enough. What kind of thing is that? It's called favor. That young man we risk their life just because they want to look at somebody. And when they when we look at him, the fire we come back with. Hey. Because that month all of us are like him. Have you not seen people? Mature men, family men, palming their hair. And they are they are not complete until the hair is palmed. Even though their whole family members are attacking them, that's how they look good. Because of the favor. He never told anybody to palm his hair. He just decorated himself and everybody who sees it is copying and pasting. You don't know me so I palm my hair. I palm my hair for more than five years. I call it. Imagine if you saw me now with Jerry Cole, with Those days, we will palm our hair, comb it on one side and my God. He is called favor. This is what gives them power. So when these men stand and they speak, the whole nation can come to a standstill. On Independence Day, people are cleaning gutters. Not because they are serving God. They say they are doing it on behalf of Pastor Chris. Married men, some are senators, some are commissioners. They will enter the gutter. What they have never done. People that they serve from January to December. When it comes to offer seven, they are in the gutter. And it's not like Pastor Chris will come and say, Thank you very much, God bless you. They don't even care. They don't even want him to say thank you. Have you not seen people who do something for you? Want to say thank you? They say, No, sir, don't say thank you. No, no, please, please don't say thank you. 
That's how men rule. But for that kind of thing to happen with you, you will mingle with the spirit for a long time. That's why I say, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high. 